So this is orange micarta. I don't know if it's right for every knife, but it looks good on this one. The standard coloration is green micarta, kind of an OD green. There might be some other colorations I missed, but you guessed it, this would be my favorite, my preferred. Both because I do like the orange and because it's exclusive. I always like that exclusivity when I buy a knife. This one is limited to 600 pieces worldwide. You're looking at number 147. The knife, of course, is, for you guys who already own it, you know, the Boker Quaken. There's a model number right there. And this is a very short, net and fancy tabletop review. I'm not super, super stoked on the knife. You may sense that. But it's a good knife. And jumping right into POU, I think it would be an outstanding EDC knife. Well, okay, let me back off on that a little bit. Maybe not outstanding. Outstanding to me is a knife of this size, that is 3.5 inch blade, at, I don't know, 1.8 ounces? To me, that would be outstanding. This one weighs 4.6 ounces because it has a stainless steel frame that is non-skeletonized, by the way. You might see that in there. So that adds some weight. Okay, so not outstanding, but a very good, how's that, EDC choice. And that's pretty much where I would center the philosophy of use on this knife. Not a tactical blade, perhaps collectible, especially this version, because 600 pieces worldwide. That's pretty cool, pretty exclusive. I think most guys who buy it, though, will use it. I don't think it will increase in value over time. I think it will just give you, the user, enjoyment. It is an EDC blade. And actually, 3.5 inch EDC blade is, in a lot of people's minds, perfection. That's what they want. Now, some of you guys would be saying, well, we knew you wouldn't like it because it's a little bit heavy, 4.6 ounces. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, you haven't been watching enough of my videos if that's that's where you are. You maybe watched one from 2008, 2009. Come on now. Stay up with the knife show here in TMP. Things change. Um, I actually will carry a substantial amount of weight with me if I think it serves a purpose. And this is not set up. This is just totally how I came to the table tonight to review. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, I always go a two-prong approach, not always, but usually, to a knife carry during the day. I'll have a little EDC blade, which today is the SOG Blink. I don't know if I engaged that safety. Probably did. There we go. SOG Blink. So that's my very small, very portable, capable EDC blade. So I use all my, you know, I'll use it for my utility cutting. Love that knife. I just love the Blink. It's a Hall of Famer here in TMP. And then I'm going to have a tactical blade, which is not light at all. Check that. Again, not set up. This is a 0561 ZT Henderer. I love this knife. Another Hall of Famer. But it is good weight in that role, in the philosophy of use, which is a tactical blade. Good traction, deep choil, all the stuff I talked about in this review. The only reason I bring this up is to show you that... I'm actually not prejudiced to a knife that weighs 4.6 ounces. It's just got to turn me on. <laughs> and it's got to make sense for my system, how, how I would carry it. I'm not saying I, I wouldn't carry this, but I just, you know, amongst all the knives that I've reviewed here, it would probably fall down in the stack. For me. For you, if you love it, I say rock on. Seriously. It is a very, very good knife. If not, in a lot of people's minds, here it comes the word, outstanding knife. That's POU. That's all I'll say. The size is, like we said, 3.5 uh, inches, the blade, and it's a trailing point, kind of an orientally styled blade. We've seen this in a lot of other knives. It is a gorgeous blade shape. Designed by a dude named Lucas Burnley. I don't know him. And it's an interpretation, I think, of a custom fixed blade that he does. So this is a folding version of that and an interpretation better said of that knife with Boker and it's a, I believe in the Boker plus line yeah there it is on the blade there which means it's going to be overseas produced focus camera focus right there which means a Taiwanese produced blade as long as quality control is tight uh, it doesn't really matter where it's made as far as quality goes politics aside 
the feel on this knife the way I look at it is it actually feels heavier than it is any ideas as to why well if you said because it's such a slender elegant and relatively thin knife you would be correct because it really isn't that heavy 4.6 ounces is totally in the ballpark but when it's put into such a slender frame it seems heavier does that make sense it does as opposed to another knife and again not set up it's just on the table like here comes a Emerson CQC8 right there that's going to be heavier than this knife but it feels almost lighter in hand because it's such a broad knife it spreads the weight out that's just a perception that I I have the balance is excellent and it once you hold it it feels very maneuverable and quick in hand the steel is OS 8 which is a good steel not OS 8A but OS 8 and out of box it has a very nice edge on it I would not do anything on the Edge Pro Apex I just run it stone washed finished speak right finish and let's take a look at the tip and the blade grinding very cool like it love the blade shape actually good belly on it really good belly and it's again very elegant and good looking overall the presentation knife is handsome the speed also is mostly good and I say mostly because even though it has a, a dual thumb plate there so it'd be good for lefties maybe not the clip placement but the thumb actuation there is an occlusion here and I've always talked about that in my my videos that how accessible is it to your thumb I would rank this as far as the deployment goes about a 5 out of 10 you can do it you really got to dig your thumb in commit to it and then you can get a good deployment on it so totally doable if you practice with it it's not ideal I mean ideally it would have perhaps a better scalloping here but again we're looking for aesthetics here and you don't want to ruin what is very a very narrow knife with a big grind you know what I'm saying to get to it IKBS which means it's ball bearing pivot point I love that uh, I think it's great and I think one out outgrowth of that is perfect blade centering sometimes if you get a Teflon or phosphor bronze bushing you will not have perfect blade centering especially if you tweak the pivot point which you can do with your Quaken you know and by the way you saw the spelling of that and I hope I'm saying it right it's K W A I K N not like Earthquaken but the other one cool name but yeah IKBS is excellent it's very fast that's not to say that a properly designed phosphor bronze or Teflon pivot point is not equally as fast but I think IKBS that is or any other ball bearing pivot system will prove to be more durable and with longer lasting blade centering especially if you take the knife apart just keep in mind these Boker pluses and this IKBS I don't think they're captured bearings so if you disassemble the knife and there might be a reason that I'll talk to you here in a second you're gonna have these little ball bearings falling all over the place all over the place so <laughs> keep track of them good luck getting them back in and if you get sand in them dirt in them I'm not sure so sure how they'll clean out I've never really had an IKBS or ball bearing pivot knife get that dirty I would probably blow it out with brake fluid blast it let it dry don't worry about the micarta scales they should be able to handle that speed though I would give adequate because just the handle uh, occlusion and what I was going to say is you can actually modify your knife to be a flipper design and the way you would do that and there's guys that have done this up on the upper right is a video go look at it dude's a TMP -er. he has a great video out there about how he did it his results you'll just mill this portion right here both the, the stainless steel frame which by the way is pretty thick that's where that weight comes from uh, you'll mill that off you'll mill the handle scales to mate it and then you'll expose the tang of the knife and you can actually flip it like that like there hey nothing fancy would you do that if you own the knife uh, with all the knives I got no I wouldn't I would carry something else <laughs> there's your on, honest answer and plus like you see I you know with practicing with this knife just a little bit 
uh, it's not that big of a deal to me to get it out you might think it is so uh, I wouldn't do it but some other guys have done it makes it for a fun project and higher pride of ownership since you modified it and it would look cool there you go who knows maybe future versions of the quake and we'll get that done or they'll have a exposed tang that would be best actually is that so guys wouldn't have to do that just have a little flipper up here I don't know if Lucas would like that in his design though by the way the lockup excellent no problems at all there's your lock bar timing shown talked about the centering already it's just perfection which is actually quite an accomplishment because the tolerances on this knife are tight there's not a lot of room for mistakes the blade retention is excellent I don't know if I'd fool with that because uh, you know where's that scar I got from the freaking tenacious right there that's a retention problem I mean, if this pops out a little bit and you reach into wherever you're reaching in and you cut yourself I don't know I like a good reta retaining blade like that you know if you modify it into a flipper knife do you need to like modify your retention you decide I probably wouldn't uh, some guys have complained by the way about this portion I think the knife is sticking up and they've cut themselves with it and they've actually ground the tip differently this particular sample here has what I can detect no problems with that like if I push my thumb down am I catching that tip of the blade and slicing my thumb no that there is a nylon spacer it is a flow through design as you can see if you need to take it apart easily done with mini torques how about uh, like we said earlier no tactical use you can probably guess why one I think 3.5 inches is kind of the minimum blade length usually depending on how broad the blade is that I would do and then also you guessed it there's no traction definitely no you guessed it <laughs> here we go jumping uh, or anything that would give me a I don't know sense of confidence when the knife becomes slippery with sweat whatever nah I wouldn't do it like we said though the blade in hand as a utility knife is just excellent here comes a clip not a really deep carry clip and that's going to be a hit for me because you're going to have this much popping out of your pocket which is substantial there's a lanyard hole there and they did a smart job in drilling it out to be big enough to take a 550 cord lanyard which is excellent kind of a coffin shaped end right there you could use that as a I don't know smacking tool against some dude be blasted clip strong enough but it's not repositionable like we mentioned lefties you're left out of the cold fortunately it is tip up configuration which is always my preference Durability, I think, will be excellent given the stainless steel, what I think is pretty much a frame lock construction. I mean, I guess technically it's a liner lock, but it's so thick it almost seems like a frame lock to me. We've seen a lot of failures with those here in the project, though, if you abuse them. I mean, frame locks are not all that. You can easily introduce some lockup problems by just smacking it. I did not overstrike test this at all. Uh, it's a loner so I can't really speak to hard use I suspect it'd be fine value is adequate but not impressive at $95 because for that $95 you could buy a lot of other knives yes lighter knives <laughs> what did I say that out loud I shouldn't have no it's not that heavy but I don't know $95 for this interpretation of Lucas's design uh, limited to 600 pieces worldwide, I would say it's good value. Let's leave it at that. Good value. You know, but there's a lot of other options. Dig into my playlist, my Hall of Fame playlist, and you'll see knives that perhaps I'm a little bit more excited about. Good cool factor, though. And by the way, I'm not doing competitive options on this. It's just going to be a short video, like I said. <laughs> if I do competitive options, it's another six, seven minutes, maybe more. But worth it. You decide, very cool knife, upper right hand portion of the screen is where you go get this knife. You get the orange one while it lasts, if it's still available, and the other colorations too. And it may be modified as time goes by. I wish him great success with it. It is a very cool knife. I love the fact that it's orange. That's cool. IKBS is awesome. The blade centering retention is superb. Blade shape is superb. And it's exclusive, which makes it even more excellent. That's the Nut and Fancy Review. See ya.